morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Roku Developer Summit. My name is Tom Charles, and I manage the developer relations team here at Roku. For those of you attending for the very first time, it's my pleasure to be the first to greet you. And for those of you who've joined us in the past, I'm happy to host you again. We have a great program lined up for you over the next two days, but before we dive into it, I just wanted to take a couple quick minutes to go over some housekeeping notes to give you an idea of what you can expect. We're going to kick things off first with a keynote presentation that we've pre-recorded for you. During the keynote, we'll cover all sorts of new and exciting topics ranging from updates on Roku Voice and channel certification autom automation to some brand new features and platform tools that we're announcing for the very first time today. So you definitely won't want to miss that. After the keynote wraps up, the rest of today's agenda will be forked into two parallel tracks of programming comprised of both technical implementation workshops and open panel discussions. The workshop sessions are intended to provide step-by-step -step instructions as to how to implement specific features into your channels. Meanwhile, the panel discussions are intentionally designed to maximize audience interaction with the Roku staff, and so will be driven almost entirely by audience Q&A with the panelists. Think of these sessions as your unfettered opportunity to ask the Roku staff any and all development questions that you have on their particular subject of expertise. Each of the panel sessions will begin with a quick presentation to highlight recent updates or socialize best practices, and then we'll transition into prolonged audience Q&A sessions. Given the open-ended nature of the panel sessions, we will wrap them up early if we find we're able to address audience questions in the time allotted. So don't be shy about asking your questions while you have the opportunity. In addition to the workshops and panels, some of you also signed up for office hours with our partner engineering team. If that's the case, you will, you will have received an email containing the time and dial-in information for these sessions. In the interest of keeping those sessions on track, we will time box those meetings to the exact pre-allocated durations. So please bring pointed and immediate questions. Now, I also have some quick technical notes on how you can participate throughout the next two days. First, please be aware that your camera and microphone will be kept off by default. We're going to be using a tool called Slido to manage audience questions today, so please feel free to submit your questions via Slido at any time. For those who haven't used Slido before, please be aware that it does include a feature that allows you to upvote questions. So we encourage you all to vote for the questions you'd most like us to address in order to ensure we can prioritize the questions with broadest appeal. When we read a question aloud to the Roku panelists, we will also read the name of the audience member who submitted the question. If you submitted the question and would like to elaborate or follow up on the question verbally, please toggle over to Zoom and use Zoom's built-in raise hand feature. This will enable the moderator to call on you to unmute your audio so that you can discuss the question with the panelists directly. However, please be mindful that the rest of the attendees in the session will also be able to hear your discussion. We will display a QR code at the beginning and end of each session with a link to the, to the page in Slido where you can submit your questions. In addition to the QR code, you can also access the code through the Whova agenda or in the Developer Summit Slack channel. Just be sure to submit your questions to the correct Slido room for each session. Speaking of the Developer Summit Slack channel, we know that the interactions between Summit attendees has historically been among the more valuable aspects of Developer Summits. This is exactly why we've set up a dedicated Slack channel to enable audience members to chat with each other throughout the next two days. If you've not yet joined the Developer Summit Slack channel, you can do so via the URL on the Whova landing page. We encourage you all to share your thoughts, comments, tools, and resources in Slack. OK, so that wraps up the housekeeping. And now we can get on with the show. Please enjoy our keynote session. And I'll see you again in just a couple hours. Hello developers, and welcome to the 2021 Virtual Roku Developer Summit. I wish I could be in person face to face and thank you all personally for a fantastic last year, despite all the challenges 
around us, and hopefully next year we'll get to that point. Uh, for background, I'm Ted Citadine. I'm Vice President of Content Partnerships. I manage distribution, content acquisition, account management, partner management, partner engineering, as well as developer relations. And I wanted to emphasize and say again in 2021, I feel like I say this every year, that there's no better time to be in the streaming business and there's no better partner to be in the streaming business with than Roku. And let me elaborate on some of the strengths of Roku and some of the successes that we've had this past year. So starting out, just in case you've missed it over the last couple of years, we are America's number one streaming platform. We reach an estimated 55 million households today. That's over 160 million people come to the Roku platform every month to engage in video streaming content. It's over 58 billion hours of content streamed in 2020. And we launched our own Roku channel four years ago, and that reaches today over 70 million households. I think it's important to emphasize the scale of the Roku platform versus other platforms out there in the market. Of course, you as developers, you have a very limited set of resources. You need to invest in the platforms that give you scale today, but will also continue to drive growth in the future. And that's why I wanted to emphasize this. Now, I feel like developers are the most enlightened people out there about Roku, but often when I talk to individuals in the media business, when they think of streaming, they might think of Amazon or Apple or Google. And they'll be shocked to realize that we're 40% larger than Amazon's Fire TV platform. We are five times bigger than Apple's Apple TV platform and six times larger than Chromecast. So we have the scale to maximize your investment on those very precious development resources. This is one of my favorite slides. This is a slide from Strategy Analytics, not a Roku slide, that details just the widening gap between Roku and the other platforms out there. And again, I think it's important to reiterate this because you need to invest in a platform that not only gives you scale today, but will also continue to grow in the future. And it's my firm belief that over time, as consumers shift from television to streaming, that there will be very well-defined winners and very well-defined losers in this category. And as you can see, by the last six or seven years, the gap between Roku and competing platforms has continued to widen. And I wanted to define some of the trends that we're seeing today and some of the trends that will continue the growth of, of the Roku platform going forward. The first is not very surprising, but it's the shift from traditional TV to streaming, and that has accelerated during COVID, and that is not changing, and that trajectory is not changing anytime soon. And the other, again, is the widening gap of Roku over other streaming platforms out there in the market. So let's start with traditional television. Again, I don't think it's going to come as a surprise that over the last 12 months, June of, 19, of 2020 versus June of 2021, that even the best performing cable platform lost 1% of its user base. Compare that with 22% growth for Roku, and you can see the incredible disparities between television consumption traditionally and streaming. I think what's also probably not surprising is in the last two years, consumption of streaming in general has grown significantly. And as you can see in the middle of this chart, in 2020, streaming got a consist considerable bump from COVID, but that growth is continuing beyond that. But I do think is an interesting takeaway is that while streaming in total was up 68% in the last two years, Roku was up a third more than that, or 93%. Again, value is being concentrated, engagement is being concentrated in a few platforms that will offer global scale relative to the others. And just to put a final point on this, comparison of second quarter last year, June, March through June of 2020, during the height of the lockdowns, versus second quarter this year, March through June of 2021, when things finally opened up, that's a very difficult comp set for traditional TV watching. Because last year, the only thing you can do being trapped at home was watch television. This year, fortunately, we have many other things that are possible. Not unex un unexpectedly, traditional TV was down from Q2 last year to Q2 this year by about 19%. Also a challenging comp for streaming platforms in general because people were doing more than just staying at home. All streaming platforms were down a collective 2%. Compare that to Roku, same time period. Again, this data is from Nielsen. This is not Roku data. Roku was up 19%, meaning the most challenging comp set year over year where people were doing nothing but sitting at home watching TV versus doing a lot more than that this year our platform still grew a considerable amount. And why are we driving this much growth? I think it boils down to three simple elements. First, 
we have global scale, and that scale is continuing to unfold on an international basis. Second, we have the best value proposition in the market, the best devices at the best price point. And third, and importantly, we have a very elegant and simple UX that encourages overall streaming consumption. Two other elements I wanted to point out as well in your partnership with Roku going forward. The first is our expertise in the advertising business. So if you have an ad-supported channel today, there's a very good chance you're already working with Roku. We help maximize the value of your advertising. We can help you fill your advertising inventory. And we have the data to make your advertising more valuable and more targeted to your user base. In addition, if you're looking to build your channel using marketing or audience development techniques that we have on the platform, we have industry-leading tools so you can find your exact consumer, your exact subscriber, your exact consumer that you want to watch your ads in order to market directly to them to make your marketing dollars go much further on the Roku platform than on other platforms. So, so consider that when you're looking to partner with Roku going forward. And the next piece I wanted to touch on is the Roku channel. So I mentioned we founded that four years ago and it's been growing phenomenally over the last four years. And my viewpoint is that any place you operate on the Roku platform, the Roku channel is a complementary attribute to your existing businesses on Roku. So if you have advertising supported content that you're looking to license, we're sharing back a tremendous amount of value to partners that are offering content to the Roku channel. Second, if you have a linear channel offering, that's been a significant component of growth over the last 12 months for Roku. In fact, we have 150 linear channels and we're adding significant amounts of channels in that linear business every week. Second is the ability to offer subscriptions directly through the Roku channel. And we have evidence to show that if you have a direct consumer channel on Roku, plus you're offering your subscriptions in Roku's premium subscriptions directly through the Roku channel, we're bringing incremental customers that you couldn't have reached through your direct-to-consumer app, meaning that's bringing incremental value. Regardless, we're happy anywhere you participate on the Roku platform, whether it's through a direct-to-consumer app, whether it's through the Roku channel, or whether it's through both. And just the last point on the Roku channel is its incredible reach on the Roku platform. So these are the top six streaming channels on Roku today. You can see Roku is number six. And that's pretty rarefied error that are in the top five. So Roku Channel has similar scale to even the largest global video services on the platform. Next, I wanted to touch on international growth. My colleague, Yulia Polterak, will expand more on this in a second. Important to look at, we're not just a US-centric company where we have the number one streaming position. We're expanding very quickly globally as well. We have the smart TV leadership position in Canada. We're the number one device manufacturer and seller in Mexico. And we just launched in Brazil in early 2020 with our TV and our player business. And that's experienced significant growth in the last year and a half or so. And breaking news, we just launched Germany about two weeks ago. That we have very high expectations for. That's a very advanced streaming market. And that's going to continue to add global scale. So inside the United States, and globally, we're constantly building our scale so your channels can reach more and more consumers on a worldwide basis. And last, I wanted to end with several new features that we're excited about for developers going forward this year and early next year. The first is voice. And we're constantly trying to make improvements to make our voice interface better and offer more utility for users. So today, you can change profiles using just your voice. And we've added enhanced dictation capabilities so you can sign up and sign in faster on Roku device. If you haven't tried this feature, it's a great way to get consumers into that sign up funnel as fast as possible. Second, we've improved some of our tooling to help give you better insights on memory utilization when you're building your channel and help now are offering better tools to debug your channel before publishing. And finally, I wanted to mention Roku Pay for your subscription channels out there. We've added a new API to help improve visibility into Dunning and partners that we've worked with over the last couple of months that have implemented this feature, we've already seen reductions in passive churn in double digit percentages, meaning they can hang on to subscribers and revenue much more effectively with this feature. And finally, we've added a new API to give our subscription partners better transparency into where transactions are coming from in their channel. And finally, two forward-looking developments that I wanted to share. First, we're making some improvements to beta testing. We're going to make it easier for developers to beta test their channels 
before they publish them to our 55 million active accounts out there on a worldwide basis. So that will become part of your standard publishing flow. And second, a new innovation I'm very excited about personally is our independent developer kit. We've never done anything like this before at Roku. It's something that's for individual developers, it's non-commercial, and will really decide and help us see how we can create more innovation on the platform. So it could be developers using that to connect their television to their thermostat or build games. We don't know how it's going to be used, but we know we have to continue to work with our developer community in order to innovate on our platform. And so with that, I'll turn it over to my colleagues. Again, I wanted to thank you for being such great partners to helping us achieve such a phenomenal 2021. I firmly believe, again, that there is no better time to be in the streaming business, and there's no better partner to be in the streaming business with than Roku. We have the worldwide scale, we have the user base, we have the technology, we have the right price points, we have the capabilities in our advertising in order to deliver maximum growth for your very limited developer resources. So thanks again, and looking forward to seeing everyone in person next year. Hi, my name is Yulia Polterak, and I run international content distribution team here at Roku. As you just heard, Roku operates in 17 markets outside of the US already. Our team works with many content partners in each territory so that local consumers can enjoy watching locally relevant stories, news, movies, sports on Roku devices. Our team is a group of dedicated content leads based in Brazil, Canada, UK, Germany, and we're always happy to speak with you in your local time zones, in your native language. Roku believes not only in quantity of content, but also in quality and diversity. Roku consumers have different viewing interests. There is a Roku user, which is a family with kids who love animation, and a dad who loves cooking shows, and a mom who loves sports, and another user who is an avid news consumer and wants to know everything that is going near and far. We have consumers who love karaoke channels or horror movie channels. There is something for everyone. And here today, I want to talk about Germany and why we at Roku have selected Germany as our new market. Germany is the largest economy in Europe and provides a tremendous opportunity for us and for you guys. It is also one of the richest countries with a high income per capita. In addition, German consumers have high affinity for streaming and there is still room for growth. German consumers have always been enthusiastic about the movies, about the content. And when the global subscription services, such as Netflix, came to Germany, the subscriptions level grew very fast. And we noticed it. And while German consumers already very well versed in all things OTT, Roku will bring something new, which hopefully will be very appealing. What is it? That is Roku's ease of use and price affinity on top of wide range of global and local content. And you guys are whole people know it quite well. So we believe this is a match made in heaven. However, our journey has just begun and we have a lot more to accomplish. German consumers 
are very savvy and they want to choose and pick content from movies to news to sports to kids content to specialty channels. We have been really fortunate to work with great German content providers, the biggest broadcasters such as ARD, ZDL, RTL, ProZibo, independent um, uh, players, very passionate OTT players such as Zan, Skino, Berliner Philharmoniker, uh, Sports Total, pay services such as Sky Ticket. And our partners all believed in the power of Roku appeal and wanted to be there with us right at the launch. And this is because those German consumers who buy our devices in the first six to 12 months are the early adopters and they're eager OTT users. They're typically the ones to share with their family and friends how excited they are about Roku, that they found this or that channel on this device and how it's easily accessible on Roku. Everyone wins if there are great channels on Roku. So if you have these channels up on Roku in other markets, and if you have the German rights, do consider extending your channels to Germany. It is worth to scale your investment. The Roku which we launched in Germany is essentially the same as in any other market, but just in German. So you will only gain more eyeballs and more subscribers. If you're not yet on Roku, then jump into the fast moving train now. Again, early adopters of Roku in Germany are the best advocates. Capture those consumers now. While your channels can stand out and be truly noticed. And we can help you to make it happen. If you want to learn more about how to distribute your channels in Germany, the great news is that we do have a workshop later today that explains the whole process and you're all invited. And uh, if you're based in Germany, please contact Bernard Glogler, who is actually based in Munich and will be happy to help you locally. Or you can write to partner success team if let's say you have a channel on Roku and you're curious how to extend it to Germany. Uh, or of course you can contact me anytime directly and I can help you uh, to find a path um, to bring your channel to Germany. I very much hope to see you in Germany soon. Our feeders in. Hi, I'm Chris Gutierrez. I'm the product manager that looks after Roku Voice. And I'm here today to tell you about some of the great things we've added as a part of our fall OS release. Before I get started, I first want to ask the question, why should you care about voice? Really, this is a question of how does your customer interact with you? We provide a platform, which is really another way of saying we provide the hardware and the software that connect you with your customer. For most of these interactions, you build an application that draws boxes and menus on the screen, and your customer uses the remote to click around these boxes and tell you what they want. The remote is designed to be as simple as possible, and hopefully no simpler, to let your customer tell you what they want you to do. Voice is the other major way by which your customer can interact with you. With voice, rather than use the directional pad to navigate, the customer tells you what they want. As Roku Voice, our job is to, as accurately and as quickly as possible, translate those sounds into words and figure out what those words mean. Voice provides a fast, low friction way for your customer to tell you what they want, especially when they know exactly what they want and when using the remote would be too slow or too cumbersome. 
Voice also provides a hands-free way for your customer to interact with you when they're busy with chores or away from the sofa. To support our goal of providing you with the best voice support in market, our team has been focused on building out platform level capabilities to better allow you to interact with your customers. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about a few of them that we recently launched with Roku OS 10.5. To start, let's discuss the enhancements we've made to the standard OS keyboards. You told us signups and logins are a source of friction, so we've actively invested to improve this experience. Last year, we introduced voice-enabled email entry. This is our new dictation system standard on our keyboards that allows your customers to easily sign up for or log into your service by dictating their email address character by character. Let's watch a quick demo of this feature in action. R O K U D E V at R O K U dot C O M. R O K U D E V at Gmail dot com. This fall, we've expanded our capability and introduced support for voice enabled password entry. This system keyboard provides an extended voice model for all the symbols allowed in password fields. Let's see how this works. Asterisk, big G, comma, underscore, exclamation point, backslash, hyphen, P, at, S, dollar sign. Next, I'd like to introduce you to our new hands-free solution, the Voice Remote Pro. Launched last spring and available this fall with select devices, this remote allows hands-free control by issuing the command, Hey Roku. To better support hands-free experiences, we've now added the ability for your customer to select their profile when the application opens. To use this feature, you pass us a short list of names, and if we hear that name, we'll pass it back to you. Here's a quick demo of this feature using the Roku Sample app to show how it works. Sarah. Wayne. Third. The sixth one. As Roku expands globally, we wanna make sure we provide great voice support for our partners. We launched Spanish support last year for the US, Mexico, and Latin America. And we've recently launched in Germany. I'm happy to announce these devices will support German voice from day one. To help with discovery, we've added basic help for voice to our menus. We know sometimes customers are unclear as to what they can say, so this section of our settings menu provides a place they can visit with clear directions on what to try. Finally, a word about certification. We asked you, our partners, to implement basic and enhanced voice controls in our applications. For some of you, this was a bit of work, and I wanted to personally thank you for helping improve the Roku Voice experience. Voice only works if the basic experience is consistent between applications, and we appreciate your support. For Spring 22, we've added requirements for using the Roku Voice keyboard and for adding enhanced voice controls. Thanks very much for your time today. I hope you found this interesting. I appreciate the opportunity to get to speak with all of you. If you are interested in learning more about Roku Voice, you are all invited to the keyboards uh, workshop later today. And tomorrow I'll be hosting a panel discussion on Roku Voice. I'd love to see you all there for both. Thanks very much for your time. Hi, my name is Mirko Predizen, and I've been a software engineer at Roku for over 10 years. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Instant Resume. This feature lets channels save their state when exited and then continue playback when relaunched. This is very exciting because viewers can quickly get back to the content they were watching on your channel without having to find it first. Even more exciting is that today, we are announcing that Instant Resume is now available to all SDK channels. This feature is ideal for live linear and VOD channels because it speeds up the launch times of content. Consider a user who is watching a live video stream and then exits the channel by pressing the home key on their Roku remote control. When they relaunch the channel later, it can resume directly into playback of the live video in approximately one second. 
Similarly, if a user is watching a movie and then exits the channel, it can display a detail screen in just a few seconds when relaunched. The detail screen can give the user the choice to either resume the video or play it from the beginning. So now that you know how Instant Resume enhances your channel's user experience, let's talk about how it works. Instant Resume utilizes the ability to run channels in separate processes. This has several benefits, including debugging and testing code is easier, memory leaks are cleaned up when the channel process exits, memory fragmentation due to channels running in separate memory address spaces is reduced, channel process crashes return the user back to the native UI instead of rebooting the device. And finally, process isolation enables CPU and memory usage to be monitored separately. To implement Instant Resume in a channel, developers just need to add two flags to the channel manifest and implement handlers for suspending and resuming a channel. If you're interested in integrating Instant Resume in your channel, the great news is that you're all invited to the workshop scheduled for tomorrow. During the workshop, we'll walk through all the integration steps. I look forward to seeing you all there. Hi, my name is Amanda Woodgo, Partner Manager at Roku. I am excited to introduce you to Roku Search Feed 2.0. As you know, Roku Search helps users find content quickly when they use text or voice to look for names of movies, TV shows, actors, and actresses on device. Traditionally, Roku Search has relied on an XML-based feed format that requires multiple feeds by language. Roku Search Feed 2.0 introduces a single JSON-based feed for you to provide your channel's entire content catalog across different countries and languages. There are many additional benefits to creating or converting to this new search feed format. Content availability windows allow you to preload a feed with titles that will appear in search on device according to your schedule. To help with title premieres across different regions, multiple time windows can be provided for each title. This single feed format also supports both content with or without TMS IDs. When submitting the feed for testing, this new feed type supports comprehensive validation, as well as errors grouped by asset type, which will improve your ability to debug before your submission. Roku Search Feed 2.0 also includes media type support for short form video, allowing you to expand your content availability and search beyond movies and TV shows. And finally, it introduces support for 16 by nine images, as well as background images that will display behind search results. Implementation of the new feed format follows the same approach as today's support for Roku Search. You will build a search feed according to the new 2.0 specifications, submit the feed via the developer dashboard, and work with partner success to resolve any issues and schedule publication. At this time, we are still in the early stages of rolling out this exciting feature. If you are interested in signing up for the waitlist, please contact partnersuccess at roku.com for more information. Hi, my name is Gary Zhou. I'm the product designer for the Roku developer platform. In the past few months, we have started working towards a brand new developer portal from the ground up. The end goals are to improve the existing workflows and overhaul the entire user experience so that our developers can make the most use of our tools and create more engaging applications on Roku. Today, I'm excited to share with you our first stop in this redesign journey. And I want to introduce you the newly redesigned developer dashboard. The new developer dashboard now features two dedicated navigations. You will still find the documentation guide, forums, and other help resources or in the top header navigation. But most of your primary tasks will now start from the new left navigation. The new navigation breaks out key features of the platform into several categories. You will be able to quickly scan through the entire list and access each feature right from here. And very soon, you will be able to access the left navigation from every page in the application. 
Now, look to the center. The main dashboard is also broken down into several sections. The first, My Channel section, displays five of your most recent updated channels. So now you can pick up where you left off and resume editing as soon as you come into the dashboard. Additionally, you will also find channel status, last updated time, all to help build a good work transition flow. The second section you will find on the dashboard is schedule releases. Imagine you are in a busy release period and you are releasing an update to a channel or launching a new product offering. This is your control center that ties all the scheduled activities together from channels to products and creates an overview that helps track the entire launch process. To ensure a smooth launch experience, you can find the current status of each item, when it will go live, and the details about each release. So anyone who has the right permission and logs into the dashboard will be able to quickly get a complete picture of all the upcoming releases. The last section on the dashboard is our what's new section. This is a dynamic content section where developers can learn about Roku's latest development tools, important announcements, and even sign up for upcoming events. This new dashboard is available now. If you log into your account today, you will see the new experience. This is just the beginning of the redesign journey. There are many more features to come in the upcoming months, so definitely stay tuned. And meanwhile, please let us know what you hope to see in the new version so we can together build an experience that is right for you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Burdick, and I lead the developer platform team here at Roku. Over the next few minutes, I'll be sharing a number of new developer enhancements we've added over the past year. One of the first developer productivity features I'd like to demonstrate is a simple utility for taking quick performance measurements of your running channel. Roku has provided a full-featured CPU and memory profiler for several years, which includes a command line interface, as well as a powerful graphical user interface for monitoring channel performance. However, developers have also asked for a companion utility, which can be run very quickly with a simpler output similar to the Linux top command. To meet this need, we implemented a new debug server command called ChanPerf. ChanPerf provides a snapshot of channel memory usage, including anonymous, file system, and shared memory, as well as user and system CPU usage. To be able to provide this information, a channel must be running in its own process as specified by using the run as process equals one manifest entry. Then, when the channel is running, simply tell Net to port 8080 of the Roku device and type the command chanperf. The command will return the current snapshot of memory and CPU usage. Next, let's look at the enhanced SGNodes all command. In the 10.0 Roku OS release, we updated this command to include information about RSG node references. In addition to the information previously reported by the command, SG nodes all now includes the number of references to each node held by the OS, OS refs, and the number of references held in the channel. As an example, here is a channel that creates numerous content nodes in a task in a loop. There is one BrightScript variable to which each content node is assigned. In the output, you can see the single BrightScript reference, but the leaked OS references for each iteration that creates a new content node. Another nice new debugging feature added to the 10.5 Roku OS is support for better BrightScript type mismatch reporting. Prior to this OS release, code like that shown would produce a very generic console message, leaving the developer to sort out the details of the issue. Now the same code provides specific information about the type mismatch error, greatly simplifying the task of correcting such coding errors. Here are some additional examples of the feature in action, showing more detailed error messaging. For example, trying to add a string to an integer produces this message. 
We haven't just been working on profiling and debugging features lately, though. We've also added some new UI features that we think you'll find useful, including some updates to the SGDEX channel development framework. A big addition is the new multi-style label RSG component. You can now mix fonts and styles within a single label to make it much easier to render stylized text. Here are a couple of examples. Each of these text blocks, with the mixed fonts, styles, and even emojis, is one multi-style label instance. Before 10.5, you would have had to stitch together separate labels with the particular subtext. A number of features have been added to the Scene Graph Developer Extensions channel framework, including button bar and a new audio mode for the media view component. Button bar is useful for implementing modern tab-style UI in your channels, and the audio mode provides a customizable playback screen for increasingly popular music channels. We hope you find these new developer features useful. Be sure to join our Scene Graph panel discussion later today. This is your chance to ask questions and interact with our Scene Graph team. We hope to see you there. Hi, my name is Pam Polly, and I manage the Partner Success Team here at Roku. Today, I'll be sharing updates on all things certification. Many of you are likely familiar with channel behavior analysis, the part of the channel builder flow in the developer dashboard that allows you to run self-serve automated certification tests on your channels. This fall, we've added a new sign-in script feature to channel behavior analysis that enables the testing of authenticated SVOD, AVOD, and free channels. Developers of these types of authenticated channels can use the Roku Remote tool to generate a script that navigates the channel's on-device sign-in and sign-out flows. Once you've written your sign-in and sign-out scripts, you'll upload them to the channel behavior analysis window in the developer dashboard and run our automated performance and deep linking tests on your channel. As the test runs are completed, you'll see whether you passed or failed in the table below. Once you pass, you can schedule exactly when you'd like your channel update to be published. Although authenticated channels are not yet required to upload developer scripts to pass certification, we will be making this a requirement sometime in early 2022. So now is a great time to start using this feature. So now that we've covered certification tool updates, let's move on to changes to certification criteria. As of October 1st, four new certification requirements have gone into effect. First, channels that have an inventory relationship with Roku must send their channel ID in ad server requests to Roku. Second, channels outside the US that have an inventory relationship with Roku and meet the specific streaming hour threshold must implement the demand API. Third, authenticated AVOD channels must display the request for information screen for customer sign-ups and sign-ins. And fourth, just like the requirement for authenticated AVOD channels, SVOD and TVOD channels must display the request for information screen for customer sign-ins. Looking ahead to spring 2022, we have only one new requirement. All channels must use the Roku Voice keyboard for email and PIN entry. This will go into effect April 1st. We also have a few updates to some existing certification requirements, which will also go into effect in April. First, the demand API streaming hour threshold for channels outside the US channel store will decrease from an average of 500,000 hours per month over the last three months to 200,000 hours per month. Second, channels must implement error handling for responding to voice controls. And third, channels must implement Now Playing and other additional enhanced voice controls that were previously documented as optional. Remember, all channels are encouraged to implement voice controls because they truly enhance the user experience. However, they're only a certification requirement for channels that have streamed more than an average of 5 million hours per month over the last three months. So that wraps up our certification update. And remember, if you have any certification-related questions, you can always reach out to the Partner Success team. Hi, my name is Sharna Math, and I lead Partner Management Team, Partner Success Team, Partner Engineering, and Developer Relations Teams at Roku. 
as you just heard from Tad, Roku is launching a new development kit and a beta channel feature, which help align the Roku platform with industry standards. Roku is releasing independent development kit to promote innovation on the platform. The IDK is a non-commercial development kit that individual developers and enthusiasts can use to develop various types of personal use applications. It features real-time 3D graphics with OpenGL ES, standard OSS shared libraries, low-level hooks into the Roku OS with a small subset of native APIs, and a simplified build system. With the IDK, developers can use CC++ to build, for example, fun casual games that work with Roku remote control, IoT apps to monitor and control the smart devices in their homes, and other tools and ut utilities as well. Now, there are a couple of important rules for building and running IDK apps. The apps developed using IDK are for personal use only, via side loading. They cannot be distributed through Roku Channel Store. Also, the IDK apps can only be run on IDK-supported streaming players running Roku OS 10.5 or above. You can find more details about building and running IDK apps on Roku developer website. Another new feature that we are excited to be rolling out is beta channels. This feature helps developer beta test their channels by giving them better visibility into channel performance. For example, developers can check the status of their test channels, view crash reports, see the number of rebuffers and streaming hours for their test channels. Now, once again, there are few rules for creating and installing beta channels. First, they expire after 120 days. Second, a developer account may only have up to two beta channels live at any point of time. And finally, a beta channel may only be installed by a maximum of 20 users at a time. You can create beta channels from developer dashboard with just few steps. Beta channels cannot be promoted to public channels. The beta channel feature is being rolled out globally and is available in all Roku retail markets. Also, note that we are rolling out these features in phases. So some features will be available today and some will be become available over next few months. So with the advent of IDK and beta test channels, we are officially sunsetting non-certified channels. On February 23rd, 120 days from today, all existing non-certified channels will be deleted across all Roku devices. This means that users will no longer be able to install or launch non-certified channels. Developers can use the new beta channel feature to continue QA test, testing channels to be certified and published to Roku Channel Store. And developers, enthusiasts, and hobbyists can use the IDK to build and sideload personal use apps on their IDK-supported Roku streaming players. You can find more details about IDK, including technical documentation, beta channel feature, and sunsetting of non-certified channels on Roku developer website. Okay, so now we are going to open up for questions. To join this live Q&A session, go to the URL on the screen. Thank you.